Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm Mom. And welcome back here to Tanson Talks TV. We are so glad to have you all here today. Yes, thank you for joining us again. Yeah, and so for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, Mom, are you able to give everyone a look at to what we're doing? Yes. Um, typically what we do is we talk about um, TV shows. Primarily, we've been looking at first episodes, and today we're going to talk about Gilligan's Island and the first episode of Gilligan's Island. Brandon, do you want to give just a little bit of insight about the first episode? Yes. Yeah, so this first episode, this is the first one we are discussing that is in black and white. And so this episode is, well, maybe the first it is not the pilot episode. The pilot episode of a series is the one that, that you use to help shop the show, but this is not the pilot. The pilot actually was produced before this and said this is the actual first episode that was aired on the CBS network in 1964. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Brandon, for providing that information. Of course, and I'm excited for you to go ahead and give us a synopsis of this episode. All right, and I will try not to sing the theme song, but you know, some of this, the theme song is very important in this particular episode, but typically, in this episode, what really happens is um, there is a shipwreck, kind of like the song says. There are five um, passengers on a particular cruise and two crewmen, and the five passengers, with the five passengers, we have a millionaire and a wife. We've got a movie star, professor, and we have a Mary Ann. Um, and then the crew um, consisted of Gilligan and Skipper. And so they were on the SS Minnow, and they did take a three, and the whole group took a three-hour tour. tour. Um, the tour actually did take place in Hawaii, which surprised me. They said it was Honolulu um, Harbor Island. And, um, and so there was a storm, and the ship did wreck. Um, when the scene opens up, the... When the scene opens up, the um, Gilligan and um, the Skipper are the first two are kind of awake and alert, I guess, and are on the island. They kind of reflect a little bit about the storm. And then one of the next scenes after that, we see um, Gilligan, Skipper, and the rest of the and the rest of the passengers, and they're all around a radio and they are talking, and um, they hear they hear on the radio um, that everyone is looking for them, and they. And they're feared that, um, that they aren't alive. And so what the radio announcer does, which does a good job for the show, of course, is actually explain everyone who was on the, on the boat itself and tells, gives a little background history for them. And I thought that was very important in a clever way in which they introduce the characters. And so we do find out that there are two millionaires on the ship. We find out that one of them is a movie star, and that would be Ginger. Um, we find out there is a professor of, and who is a research scientist and a scout masker, master. And then we also find out um, there is a lady named Marianne who's on the sh on the ship also, and they say she's from Kansas. Um, but they all kind of sit and talk a little bit. And then Gilligan and the skipper decide that they want to make a raft in order to um, to find a way to leave the island or to get help. And so they do make the ship make the um make the raft um the professor does indicate that he didn't think that anyone would survive on this particular raft um going out to sea and um so the the raft does take take off with gilligan and skipper and the professor was correct as in that sharks decided to circle the ship and uh, circle the um, raft and basically ate the raft so they were back on the island later but when they landed back on the island, they were on the other side of the island than the passengers. But the passengers did, but the skipper and Gilligan didn't realize they were on the same island as as the passengers. And so um, they um, so they tried, decided to make a fire in order to get warm. And as they made the fire, the other part of the island saw the um, they saw the smoke, and um, once they saw the smoke, they thought that they were being invaded by a tribe called the Marubi tribe. Marubi tribe, and so um, they all kind of gathered together and and decided they wanted to trap the Marubi tribe because they because they really didn't know if they were in danger or not, and so they go to so they go to a cave and they set a trap. In the meantime, Gilligan and the skipper. 
they were out and about and they heard um, what they thought was kind of a call, but it was really the professor who would kind of show them how to use these shells in order to um, to alert each other if they saw someone from the tribe. So they hear that um, and everyone kind of gathers in this particular cave. Of course, they're all going in typical comedy at different time periods. And then finally, two of them see each other and they realize that they are all together and there really is not a Maruby tribe at this point on the island. And the trap that the professor made in pure Gilligan's style was actually um there were rocks that were going to come down and kind of trap the people in the cave and so Gilligan skipped over it and of course all the rocks came down um and this is really how they kind of ended with all of them getting out of the cave and then you're kind of left to wonder how are they going to survive on this particular island cool well thank you so much for the synopsis oh you are welcome yeah and i guess to go back to what, what you were saying earlier you know, about, yeah, trying not to sing the theme song is that the theme song is really pivotal to, you know, understand the show. It is. It is very pivotal to understanding the show. I think it's one of the, um, you know, this is our second Sherwood Shorts, Swart, Sherwood Schwartz, um, show that we've watched, a Brady Bunch being the other one. And in both of these episodes, um, the theme song is, is very important. And, um, when I watch, when we watch the episode, of course, I always watch it with the, um, I watch it with the words down at the bottom and the closed captions. And so I read the, so as I was reading the um, song, it was just a minute, you know, and of course we all sing to it, but reading it is a little different and seeing how important it is that you capture everything that they really say in the song, because it does tell the audience weekly why this, um, why this group has been shipwrecked. Yeah. And I definitely say that, you know, for the show that, I don't know, it's sort of like, I mean, I guess for any show with their theme songs, but especially for this one, it really takes you right back into, you know, who are the people, why are they here, and everything you need to know about the show, where, sure, you can just go into a random episode, and the theme song tells you right then there everything you need to know before you get into it. It does. And if I had to rate it, Brandon, I'd give it a 9.5, because I don't know almost, I don't know quite all the words yet. Um, I know the majority of them. And what I like about the theme song for Gilligan's Island is they actually have a, a back song, too. So as the show ends, there is another song that kind of comes up that continues the tale of the castaways. Yeah. And, and I guess for us going for the theme song, is that this first season actually has a slightly different one than the future seasons. And I know we mentioned before that this episode is in, um, is in black and white. And so the full first season is black and white. The rest of the series is in color. Yes, it is. It is. I guess, and with the theme song, Brandon, I guess they realized that with only listing five people, they could list the other two for the next version of the theme song. Yes, and so if you have not seen the Gilligan's Island theme song, first of all, I highly recommend you tuning into it um, because it is a very memorable theme song in my opinion. But but whereas it mentions the whole story of the show and mentions almost every character, but when it gets down to it after it speaks about you know, Gilligan, the skipper, the millionaire, and his wife, yeah, in the movie star, then it just says, and the rest. Even though there's only two more people it didn't mention, it just says, and the rest. Yes. Here on Gilligan's Isle, yeah. <laughs> I know. And the other thing that I, um, that I noticed is that I don't believe that Gilligan has a last name or a first name. We just know Gilligan. <laughs> this is the, yeah. is the name. Yeah, I think Gilligan truly is just Gilligan, even when the radio was speaking about him, you know, speaking about everyone, first, last name, even if they have, you know, a uh, suffix at the end of, of it. But for Gilgan, it's just Gilgan. Gilgan, yes. But yeah, but um, for future seasons of the show, it does actually add the Professor and Mary Ann at the end for the credits. But for this first season, just and the rest. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Brandon, what did you... Um... 
Well, first of all, I don't even know if I told you. Why did, did I ever tell you why I actually selected this show? Just so the audience knows, I selected this show for this one. And so, did I tell you why I select this show, selected this show? I don't think you told me, but if I were to take a guess, it's because you have you don't care for the show. Well, it's because I have. Um, yes, that is true. Um, but I never watched a full episode. And so I wanted to see how it actually started because I've never watched a full episode of Gilligan's Island. I've seen bits and pieces throughout the years. And of course, um, it was on reruns, of course, when I was growing up, but I never watched a full episode. So I said, let's try this so I could see a full episode to see if I, if I watched a full episode, would I like it? And would I continue? And Brandon, I don't know if I'll continue. Well, I probably will watch episode two. But after that, I'm not quite sure if I will continue with the show. And so I guess I'll ask as a follow up question, what were your initial thoughts about the show prior to watching it? And then what were your thoughts now having seen episode one? Well, I will say, well, initially watching it, it just seemed kind of silly. What I mean is Gilligan's Island. So, I mean, it, the premise is kind of silly. Um, not that I have to have much deepness with my shows, but it just seemed kind of silly. Um, after watching it, I didn't. I watched for the subtle details that were in there in the ep, this particular episode. There were kind of some things I saw that kind of surprised me, and I'm sure it was in there for a reason. I noticed they talked about food in this one. I don't know if you picked up on, on it or not, but um, they talked about the type of food that they had to eat there, even though they were only there for, at that time, I think three days on the island. Um, I always wondered about their clothes, and apparently the Howls were the only ones that had luggage. I don't know why they had luggage but they had luggage. <laughs> so, um, so they talk about them having luggage. And I guess I know in some episodes, they, I've seen them make clothes and things like that. So I guess that's how they do it is with the house clothes. I will have to see if um, Marianne and um, Ginger actually wear the same outfit all the time. I don't know. And, um, and I guess I would have to look, basically look to see if the professor too i'd have to look and see if they all change clothes I, because they're not supposed to have clothes there um but they had a lot of socks that they talked about in the first episode which i thought was really odd um but yeah so i was looking for some of the small things that i really didn't know but i thought it was interesting that they placed it in that particular episode yeah, and I think it was only Gilgan that had socks, but they used it to make an SOS sign, so I yeah. guess he doesn't have any anymore. I don't know. I guess so. I guess his extra socks are gone now. But yeah, but especially for it being a three-hour tour, it wasn't even like a overnight thing. And what I found odd was that when, they, when the episode started off, Gilgan and Skipper were just then waking up, you know, and so, like, I'm not sure if they... Because they said they weren't sure how to tell everyone else that they had been shipwrecked and everything. And so, like, were they just happened to be asleep on the deck of the boat? And, you know, like, how how are they all asleep on the deck? Like, do they all become unconscious? I'm, I'm highly confused of how that occurred. I know. And we never saw the rest of the passengers wake up. They were just, if I remember correctly, they were just all sitting outside at some point. So we don't know. We don't know what conversation occurred. Yeah, and oh, sorry, keep going. No, we are also. I'm also kind of confused to how they were able to power that radio for so long. Yeah, and supposedly for having not a single luxury, I feel like radio is somewhat of a luxury. And how do they have signal? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like with signal. Yeah, so a lot of unanswered questions, and I know that there are things that purposely we're not supposed to know, but <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, um, something. What is something that surprised you? Like, did any of the characters surprise you, or was there a character you particularly liked over the others? Um, for an introductory show, there wasn't one that I liked over the others. I mean, even though Gilligan was silly, he wasn't as silly as I remembered. Um, you could tell the skipper was smart, um, and obviously the professor too. So, you know, that's why I would give it one more episode just to see how. It actually fared after the first episode. Yeah, and I will say for even though you have not, yeah, you know, seen a full episode prior to this, and we watched it twice. Um, 
you know, whereas I have seen several episodes of Mummy, they had been quite a while ago. And so, whereas you saw it and was like, okay, it's maybe not as silly as you remember it. Mm -hmm. I remember, I mean, I perceive this as, especially the second time going around, more silly than I remember it. (laughs) And... Yeah, and I don't know. I feel like I had a higher opinion of the professor before this, but the professor seemed to know a lot, but he didn't seem the brightest in this episode. So I, I don't know. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Yeah, I understand that. That's why I said I'll give it one more episode and I'll just see. But in general, I probably will not continue, kind of like I said, continue watching it. Yeah, I will say I really like the theme song, but especially the closing song. I really like the closing song. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit better than the yeah, than the theme song itself. Yeah. Yep. That's true. But yeah. Um but I'd say for a standout character for me, I I I've always liked the skipper. Um he like you said, he definitely seems the most intelligent out of the group and I don't know, he seems very hardworking and Whereas the theme song introduces Gilgan as, you know, as being a part of the the mighty crew. I don't, I don't see what Gilgan really contributes. And like, I don't know. It, like he doesn't, I don't know. I, I'm probably thinking way too much into this for escapist television in the 1960s, but I don't know. I, 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 I can't, I feel like they would sort of be better off without Gilgan. I mean, because even for a simple thing as to leave on the raft that he can't manage to pull the anchor out to let them leave. And I mean, I know it's intentionally there and he is somewhat of a comic relief, but I I don't, I don't know about Gilgan. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then they called it the show. So you're right. He is just truly supposed to be comic relief for this. I guess, well, obviously he should be a serious subject, but he's just comic relief for them. But yeah, but overall, is there anything else that you want to discuss about for this first episode of Gilligan's Island? No, I think I addressed everything I had on my nose. Yeah, and I think I discussed everything, you know, for my notes as well. Oh, other than that, the millionaire, as a the theme song um, introduces, is actually a billionaire and not millionaire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a small technicality. Yeah, which I found very interesting. I really thought... You know, he would be a millionaire because the theme song said so, but I guess not. Other than that, I mean, the only other thing from my notes is that, you know, when they, like, on the theme song itself, if you were to look at the, you know, I guess right before they took sail, it says that the minnow um, has exotic tours and free lunch. And free lunch, <laughs> Maybe that explains why they have food. <laughs> have some food anyway. Which then begs the question of, in my mind, when they woke up, it was morning. So how long had they been out before, like, they all woke up? Uh, that is a good question. <laughs> good question. Because from the way it sounds like, because of the way that they, yeah, that they addressed that Ginger was there, it sounded like she came there right after being at a nightclub, which... Make, which presumes that this would be at night that it happens. So yeah. I don't know if it's just a theme song thing or it's just a small detail you're not supposed to pick up on. I don't know. Yeah. We probably were a little too deep for this episode. Midnight lunch? I mean, it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, before we... Uh, <laughs> we're, we're sorry to major fans of Gilligan's Island, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you would say before we go ahead and just close this out? No, I think we're going to brand it. All right. And I guess that since I didn't answer the question, I probably don't have a need to, you know, to watch another episode per se, but I don't know. But I might tune into an episode if it's already on the TV, yeah. but I don't think I would intentionally tune in to another episode per se. Yeah, I just want to see them build their houses. I figure that's got to be episode two. So, uh, so I would tune in for that one. Yeah, and I do actually want to see, I don't know where you can find it, but I do want to see the unaired pilot um, for the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to see what changed, but I don't know where you can find that. Yeah, it's a good question. 
But yeah, well, thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of Tansen Talks TV. We hope that you enjoyed it. All right, thank you for thank you for watching us. And feel free, any other shows that you'd like for us to watch, please put it in the comments below. Or feel free to make comments about Gilligan's Island. If you go back and rewatch the first episode. Yeah, and let us know. I mean, do are, are our questions valid or yeah, or should we just stop analyzing it and just start enjoying it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the true true bread. But yeah, but until next time, have a wonderful day, everyone, and we'll see y'all next week. All right. Bye-bye.